Hi there, Mike MacArthur from the Oshkosh Public Library, ready for some more Librarian Learns. This is the series where I take a look at a piece of Oshkosh history that I found interesting or someone had asked me about while I was working at the library. And a reminder, these are not really complete histories, but fun facts uh, to hopefully engage your curiosity so that you can come down to the library and get the full uh, history and story. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at one of the oldest women's uh, groups in the city, the 20th Century Club. The 20th Century Club uh, was one of uh, several study, women's studies groups that were founded at the end of the 19th century. Their objective, uh, then as it is today, was to stimulate the intellectual development, to promote good fellowship, and to strengthen the individual effort for humanity by efficient organization. To really understand uh, how important the 20th Century Club was to its members when it was founded and today, we have to take a look at some of the historical and political context from which it sprang. In the mid-19th century, there was an explosion of women's studies groups. This was seen as a way to further their education and provide opportunities for community service and involvement. This was a time where advanced education and political community involvement was pretty limited for women, even those who were very well off. This explosion of women's group also uh, overlapped with the progressive movement, roughly 1895 to 1925. Cities and communities across the country were dealing with a variety of problems from an increasingly industrialized and urbanized society. Issues like poverty, child labor, crime, pollution, these were all major issues that cities and societies were grappling with. And so though the initial focus of these study groups was educational and social, they started merging with a kind of progressive activism. A lot of these groups ended up getting involved with such progressive uh, causes such as women's suffrage, temperance, and child labor. So the women in Oshkosh uh, started forming these groups because they realized that though they couldn't vote or hold office, they could flex some political power through these social groups. So on August 16, 1896, Catherine Hughes Cleveland gathered members of a local discussion group at her home at Stony Beach to listen to leaders of women's clubs from Milwaukee and Fond du Lac uh, give their pitch for creating a local chapter here in Oshkosh. Uh, the club began with about 207 members, formed with a standard number of departments including art, music, education, philanthropy, and social political activism. Throughout the club's history, members came from a veritable who's who of Oshkosh families, including Mary Jewel Sawyer, Florence Buckstaff, Adeline Choate, Sophie Gooden, Jesse Jack Hooper, Jane Albee, and Rose Swart. Two charter members were prominent Wisconsin suffragettes, Jesse Jack Hooper and Sophie Gooden. Jessie Jack Hooper was married to prominent Oshkosh attorney Ben Hooper. She was active in a number of groups in, uh, in Oshkosh, including the Daughters of the Revolution. She also famously ran for state senate against La Follette in 1922 and was the first president of the Wisconsin League of Women Voters. Sophie Gooden had her real passion in activism. She was multilingual and thusly was assigned to publicize the suffrage campaign around Wisconsin in English, German, and Polish. Uh, it said that she gave over 150 speeches to uh, quote unquote hard hearted Germans. That had to be a pretty tough crowd. The newly formed association held its first meeting on October 31st, 1896, at the Congressional Church on Algoma Boulevard. Mary Jewel Sawyer served as its first president since she had been a member of the Women's Club of Milwaukee. The Oshkosh Club was not as uh, forceful as some of the other groups when it came to the kind of political activism. They preferred writing letters and petitions as, a, as opposed to walkouts and marches. A big problem in the early days was finding a space large enough to accommodate the, the new association and uh, it had to be a space that did not serve alcohol, which was a tall order in the 1890s Oshkosh. So they bounced around until they finally purchased in 1900 the very large home of lumberman Joel Mead. Mead had built this fantastic home on Wisconsin Boulevard, which still stands today. Let's go take a look at the century as it was known. 
All right, here I am at the corner of, uh, what, what is it? Wisconsin and High, and right behind me is The Century. For over 70 years, the home of the uh, 20th Century Club. It's originally built for lumberman uh, Joel Mead. Upon his death, it was bequeathed to the Ladies Benevolent Society, who quickly uh, looked into it to making it a uh, home for elderly women, but decided on selling it and sold it to the 20th Century Club. It became known as The Century uh, due to the fact that the 20th Century Club became uh, owners of it just right before the turn of the century. After making some major renovations, including uh, putting in a ballroom, they first occupied it October 16th, 1901. Uh, the club occupied the century for almost 70 years, but eventually sold it, the property, in 1968, though they maintained meetings there until 1969. From 1970 to about 1994, they had their meetings here at the Oshkosh Legion, or as it was called uh, at the time that the 20th Century Club was having their meetings here. Today, it's known as the Waters, and kind of classically, it was the Oshkosh Yacht Club. So they met here until about 1994 when they moved to the newly opened Senior Center, and these days the club meets at a variety of locations around town. In 1910, the organization incorporated and became the 20th Century Club. As the progressive era started to wind down in the mid-1920s, the social functions of the club really took center stage. They started bringing in quality and educated lecturers to talk about various topics, including travel and current events. The annual breakfasts uh, were the, really the big draw. These were themed events that were very lavished. All the women got dressed up in kind of themed uh, outfits, their very best, and it was really looked upon as a, the big social event uh, of the year for them. The 20th Century Club had a strong connection to youth, particularly the Campfire Girls. They got to use the Century space free of charge. However, there were rules. In 1912, it was decreed that dances such as the Grizzly Bear, the Turkey Trot, the Bunny Hug, and others of quote-unquote like character, i.e. these are so-called animal dances that were popular in the ragtime era, shall not be permitted. I wonder if that still stands today. The club remains active today, and in October of 2021, they started their 125th season. Members still enjoy getting together, socializing, listening to various programs, as well as they continue to fundraise and give to local charity and community organizations. More than anything, the members today are drawn to the club's traditions and long history and ties to the Oshkosh community. So hey, I learned something. If you like these videos and want to see more, of course, hit like, hit subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff so the algorithm picks this up. And with that, I will see you later.